In today's video, I will show you how to create the popular Lomo effect using Luminar Neo. The Lomo effect is known for its creative freedom in photography. While the original effect was based on an old compact camera, which is no longer in production, in today's tutorial, I will show you how we can easily recreate it using a handful of tools in Luminar Neo. Now, before we going to start with the edit, let's talk about the Lomo effect. Lomo, also known as Lomography, has been a globally popular style of photography ever since it was first introduced in the early 90s. Originally, it was introduced by a group of Austrian students who used old compact cameras to capture their images with a number of imperfections like warping, vignettes, light leaks and more. Today, the Lomo photos are characterized by bright colors, lens distortions, high contrast, vignettes and noise. These photos aren't meant to look perfect, but they should represent a casual style that allows endless freedom and creativity. In today's tutorial, we will use help of the Develop, Vignette, Film Noise, Blur and Color Harmony tools to recreate this effect on your own photos in Luminar Neo. Ok, so as you can see, I'm already in Luminar Neo, we are in the catalog module and just as always, we are starting by looking at our sample file. Now, don't forget that if you want to follow me along and do the edit on your own computer, all you need to do is to jump into the description of this video, follow the link there and download the sample files now. Once you're ready, import the photo in your Luminar Neo and we can start. Now, today we're only using this one image because that will be more than enough. So simply select it and then move it into edit module. In the edit module, we're going to start by developing the image in the develop tool. So we're going to open the develop tool and here we're going to do number of things. Starting in the light section, we're going to add lots of contrast because the Lomo effect is known for lots of contrast. After that, we're going to also take care of the highlights, shadows, blacks and whites. One more time, the Lomo effect is known for really bright highlights and very deep shadows. So to really push that, we're going to take the highlight slider and bring it all the way up. And then we're going to take the shadow slider and bring it all the way down. Now, with that being adjusted, we can move into the blacks and whites, where we can really push this even further by taking the blacks and bringing them down. And really, you need to adjust this based on your image, but keep an eye on the image, keep an eye on the blacks and make sure that you really get the deep shadows and deep blacks. So on this image, I think somewhere around minus 40. On the opposite with the whites, we will help to really push the highlights and make the whites really bright by taking the white slider and bring it up. Let's have a look. I think somewhere around 25 will do. So lots of contrast, really bright highlights, really deep shadows, and then adjust the blacks and whites based on what you like. So that's that. We can close the light and blacks and whites, and then we're going to open the color section. Now, in general, the Lomo photos have a little bit of warmth in them. So we can add a little bit of temperature. Now, no more than one or two, I think. Maybe two is enough. And then a little bit of extra tint on the magenta side. So let's also do two. So two on temperature and two on tint. But while we're here, we also have to take care of the saturation. One more time, the Lomo photos are really known for really bright saturation and lots of colors. So we're going to take the saturation slider and bring it up to, let's say, let's have a look. We can overdo it and then see what we like. I think somewhere around 25 looks good. So a little bit of warmth, touch of magenta and lots of saturation with the saturation slider. Now we can close the color tool and the final thing we're going to add here is the distortion. For this, we need to open the optics tab and we're going to use the simple lens distortion slider. 
Now here, it really is up to you what you want to do. You can bring it down and then you will get almost like a fish eye around the center of your image. Or you can go the other way around and kind of sink the middle and bring up the corners. Now, personally, I prefer that. I quite like to take the slider to the right, maybe somewhere around 40. But again, it really is up to you what you decide to do with your own image. However, don't forget to do the lens distortion in the optics tabs once you in the develop tool. So in the develop tool, we taking care of the highlights and shadows, contrast, color and lens distortion. Once we're done with all of that, we can now close the develop tool and continue. The next stop is the vignette tool. The Lomo effect is really known for heavy, heavy vignette. So for this, we're going to take the amount slider and bring it all the way down. Now it looks a lot, so we can back it up a little bit. I think somewhere around minus 90. And if you would look at the Lomo pictures, you would notice that the vignette isn't always in the center of the image. It often is on the side or a little bit out of the center. So we can replicate that by simply clicking on choose subject and then just offset it a little bit by clicking a little bit away from the center of the image. Now, if you think that amount is too strong, you can still adjust it. Let's say that we can go to somewhere around minus 85. And for the time being, that's good enough. So offset the center of the vignette and bring the amount really heavily down to somewhere around minus 90 or minus 85. So that's that. We taking care of the vignette and we can move into the creative section of our main toolbar. Here we're going to take care of number of things. First come first, we're going to add some nice film grain because the Loma pictures are known for lots of noise. Now with the amount slider, let's bring it up. Let's overdo it and go somewhere around 30. Have a look at that. Now that looks quite good. I think maybe 25 would do. You always have to let go the slider and give it a moment for it to apply. And I really think that maybe 20 or 25 will do. So film grain, 25 on the amount. After that, we also need to add a little bit of blur. In general, the Lomo photos are quite sharp in the center or around the subject. And then very quickly, they get soft when it comes towards the edges of the image. Now we can easily recreate that by going into the blur tool, making sure that we are on the Gaussian filter. And here we're going to increase the amount. Let's have a look. Now we don't want to over overdo it, but I think that around 13 or 10, let's have a look. 10, maybe 15 even. We go for the 15 and we can adjust that a little bit later on. So amount with 15. And now one more time, we want the center of the image to be sharp and then everything else starting from the center to the edge start to be more and more soft. So to do that, we have a great tool in the masking, which is called Radial Gradient, and that will work perfectly for this example. So as it suggests on the screen, we should click and drag to draw the gradient. So we'll do exactly that. And after that, once we paint it, we can position it around. So let's position it over our subject. We can also use the little white dots uh, just to adjust its shape a little bit. And maybe, maybe we can make it a little bit bigger. Now you can also rotate it around and see what you prefer. Now it's good to know that the area in the center, that's where the effect is applied to 100%. After that, from the first line here, all the way to the last line, you start by 100% here. And by the time you reach the second line, the effect is on zero. However, for us, what we want to do, we want the effect to be applied to the edges. So actually the opposite of what we have. Now to switch this, it's really simple. Let's jump back into the blur tool and simply click on invert. Now with that being done, one more time, you can see how we have the 100% of the blur here. And then from the second line into the middle, that's where the gradient is happening. Now we can come back into the adjustment, have a look at the result. And I think it's quite good. 
Now, if we want, we can bring the amount down or we can increase it, whatever you prefer. But I think for me, somewhere around 15 looks good. Now we are finished with the blur tool and we are done with the creative section. For the final tool we're going to be using to adjust the effect, we need to go all the way to the bottom of the main toolbar and we need to open the color harmony tool. Now, before we're going to continue, I want to quickly remind you that this tutorial is powered by our Luminar Neo Winter Bundle. Our popular bundle is back with over 860 winter elements to power up your favorite Luminar Neo tools. For a little fee, you will get winter skies, overlays, textures, backgrounds, frames, working layers, LUTs and presets to transform your winter images with just a few clicks. Plus, if you get it now, you will also get an additional festive bundle to really get you ready for the upcoming holiday season. Now to get the best possible price, follow the link in the description of this video or to find out more about it, head to our website cleverphotographer.com. And now we can come back to our edit and our color harmony tool. Here, let's make it nice and visible and we're going to be looking for the color balance tab. Click on it to open it and here we're going to be adjusting colors separately for highlights and for shadows. So let's start by adjusting the shadows. In the shadows, we want to add a little bit of cyan. And to do that, we simply going to take the cyan and red slider and shift it towards the cyan. Now overdo it and then bring it back up to see what you prefer. After that, we move to magenta and green and we're going to add a little bit of green into the shadows. So we're going to take the slider and bring it slightly up. I think just somewhere around, let's have a look, maybe four. Finally, with the yellow and blue, what we want to do, we want to add a little bit of blue into the shadows here. So we're going to take the slider and just shift it towards the blue. Now we're going to bring back the cyan a little bit. I think it's a little bit too much. Maybe add a little bit of green and a little bit of blue. And that's about it. So cyan and red, we are on minus 19. Magenta and green, we are on 6. And yellow and blue, we are on 9. Now let's have a look before and after. And it's starting to look good. However, we have one more step left. And that's switching the drop down box into the highlights, where we're gonna do exact opposite. We're gonna add red into the highlights. So again, overdo it and then back it up a little bit. We also gonna add magenta into the highlight. So again, down a little bit. And with the yellow and blue, we're gonna add a little bit of warmth. Now we already added a warmth with a white balance at the beginning of the edit. So don't overdo it, but just a little bit, maybe like minus five, will add extra touch to it. So cyan and red in highlights on 16, magenta and green on minus eight, and yellow and blue on minus five. One more time, let's have a look at the before and after, and it really helps to finish the effect. Now we can close the tool and apply it to the image and we can return to the top of our main toolbar. Now it's a good point to have a look at the before and after. And you can really see that with the combination of multiple tools, we have ended with this really cool Lomo look. Now, if you need to adjust any of the edits we have made, you can always jump into the edits tab on your main toolbar and go through any of these tools and adjust it. Finally, as an extra tip, I want to show you how you can add a little light leak to your image. And to do that, we need to jump into the layers panel here, click on the plus sign and just use one of the light leaks that come with the application. So for me, I'm just going to use this one right here. So simply click on it and apply it to the image. Once it appears, you can then jump into layer properties and adjust the opacity to see how much of the light leak you would like to add to your image. For me, I think somewhere around 45 looks good. And once I'm happy with it, I can close the layer properties. One more time, have a look at the before and after. 
or we can also use the slider to really move around and see what we created. And that's about it. So there you have it. This is how you easily create your own Lomo look inside of the Luminar Neo. And there you have it. If you want a copy of our popular Luminar Neo shortcut cheat sheet, there is nothing easier than heading to our website cloudofphotographer.com slash Luminar Give. While you're there, you can also check out one of our popular Luminar Neo products, or you can stay here and watch more videos about Luminar Neo. For today, I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, please make sure that you like, comment, and share on this video. And also, don't forget to subscribe to our channel so we can keep creating content like this. For today, thank you very much for watching. My name is Jacob Bors, and I can't wait to see you in the next video.